In this image, we're going to do a little color correction using the lasso tool and create a more compelling background. We'll also introduce the polygon lasso tool or polygonal lasso tool, depending on your preference for pronunciation. We'll start by going to the regular lasso tool, and I'm going to zoom into this shot with Command Plus or Control Plus. You can also use View Zoom In. I'll make a rough selection of the baby's forehead because she's got a little bit of red there, and it's hard to know whether that red is just a reflection of the top that she's wearing, or she might have some rosacea. If I were to make a straight color correction, I would see a seam between the skin tone and where I'm attempting to remove the red. Let's see that. Under Image, Adjustments, Color Balance, I can move a little bit away from red and a little bit away from magenta and turn Preview off and on. In fact, I need to move away from magenta, not towards magenta, to remove that red. And turn Preview off and on. And if I were to click OK and click once to deselect, I can see a clear line, evidence that I've done correction. So I'm going to step backward twice. Or you can make a new selection by clicking away and drawing a new area. You'll notice that I'm being very loose about this selection because we are going to use feathering. Feathering will blur the edge so that there's no evidence of the work that you've done. I'll choose Select, Modify, Feather. I'll type in a large number like 25 and click OK. The number will vary depending on the resolution of the image. Now I'll do the same process, Image, Adjustments, Color Balance. Move a little bit away from red and a little bit away from magenta. I could do the same in the highlights also. A little bit away from red and a little bit away from magenta. And when I click OK and click once outside the selection to deselect, it's a smooth blend. You see no evidence of my work. In fact, I often use history over at the top right to click once and see before and after. Much better. I'll click history again to collapse it, and I'll hit Command-0 or Control-0 to fit in window. Now, looking at this original shot, I'll hit the eye icon to hide the black layer that I created. This was the original dimension of the photo. But to make it more interesting, I'm applying the rule of thirds. If I click the crop tool and click once just anywhere on the photo, you could see I'm aiming to get her face in a PowerPoint where these two grid lines intersect, making it a more compelling photo. Digital cameras, or cameras in general, usually have a lens that has a rectangular frame, and you have three fields of view, your horizontal, your vertical, and your diagonal. With the field of view, I want to call the eye to the interesting part of the photo, the subject being the baby. So I'm going to go back to my Move tool, and I won't crop the image. I only brought that up to show the rule of thirds. I want to drop in this background. But on the background, I've got a bar running through it. So let's see if we can use the Polygon Lasso tool to remove that bar. With the Polygon Lasso tool, I'm going to click once to start, and I'm not holding down the mouse. Look, Ma, no hands. As I move up, Photoshop will connect the dots with each single click. No holding down required and I'm making a very rough selection, leaving a little bit to chance or a little bit of a border outside the image. Coming all the way down here might cut off a little bit of the bar, so I'm going to leave a little background in so that Photoshop will do a better job. And if you get back to the point where you started, you'll see a circle indicating Photoshop will close this polygon selection with one click. 
it may be difficult to get exactly to the point where you started. So if you can't hit that exact spot, a double click will also close your selection. But with any selection, you always want to work back to the point where you started so that Photoshop doesn't decide how to close it for you and chop off part of the image. So just attempt to get very close. Double click will close. Now we'll use the all powerful edit, fill, leave it on content aware, leave it on normal, and click OK. And it did a beautiful job. In fact, most of the child will cover up this. If you don't like it, just choose edit, fill again, content aware again, and it will regenerate a new pattern. But I'm happy with this. And instead of clicking away to deselect, that's going to start a new selection. Very big note on this tool. Escape on your keyboard will cancel that. Or if you start a new selection and you don't want it, double click will close. And it's safer to use select deselect or control D on Windows, command D on the Mac. Now I will do select all, control A or command A, copy, click on the baby photo one more time, and choose edit, paste, or control V. This is a little bit off center, but that's okay. I'm going to take my move tool and move this over because I have the black there. I'll name this layer background, Hit return or enter and drag it underneath the baby. Now let's do a little blending of the two. I'll click on baby and I'll go back to my regular lasso tool. I'll make a very rough selection around the baby and I messed up there but I'm going to let it go. As long as you don't let your mouse go you'll be good when it comes to making rough lasso selections. I can actually use subtract from selection at the top and click and drag in a circular motion, being very careful to close where I started. And now that selection is cleaned up. If I find it's too close to the baby's arm, I'll choose add to selection and again, make a circular close back to where I started. You can be very rough about it inside the selection area because you only need to be careful where you want to make a new edge and I always finish in a circular motion. Again I'm going to use the feather. Select, modify, feather. And this time I'll use a bigger number, 35. I'll click OK and all I need to do since this baby is on its own layer Go to the bottom of the Layers panel and click once on Add Layer Mask, and I've done a beautiful blend. And here you can really see how that blending happened. In fact, if you master layer and layer masks, I could paint a little bit more of that ear and the person in the background away. This technique is one I use very often to make more interesting shots out of a photo that I already love. Often that photo may have something distracting in the background. Now, whenever I'm out and about with my camera, I'm always looking for surfaces that would make new interesting backgrounds to drop into a shot of a subject that I really like. Hopefully you'll review this on your own and master this technique of dropping in new backgrounds using the lasso tool or making selections with the polygon or polygonal lasso tool.